Hey guys, Lance here. Welcome to the second part of my water cooling build in the Fantex Evolve ATX case. In this video I wanted to cover some of the parts of the case I didn't get to mention in the previous video and I also wanted to cover what I've already started doing regarding building and also some of the problems I've faced so far with the build. I'm definitely taking a lot longer than I planned for this build but it should be coming together pretty soon. But at the rate I'm going, it'll probably be time for another upgrade by the time it's up and running. I mean, did you see the GTX 1080 and 1070 that just got announced? They put my two 970s to shame. But anyway guys, I'll get in close and we'll start some of the building. I started test fitting some of the parts into the case. Now I want to mention that I haven't done much work on this for quite a while. I've been doing some work on my track car, but I really want to get into getting this all working. Now we can see here I've mounted the XSPC radiator into the top of the case and as soon as I've mounted that up I've run into a bit of a problem with my RAM coolers. I don't know if you can see that here. Um, my finger, uh, it's probably a bit hard to see on camera but anyway the RAM coolers are quite tall and there's actually no or not enough clearance for the middle fan to mount here. I'll take one of these sticks of RAM out so you can see how tall those coolers are. So we can see that those Arctic RC coolers are quite tall and don't clear that radiator. So what I'm planning on doing is getting some new DDR3 RAM. I might get a fast clock speed, probably not too much faster, maybe just 1886 as these are 1600. I'm hoping the DDR3 RAM will be quite cheap because DDR4 is becoming a lot more common with Skylake, but we'll see how we go. I was really not wanting to do that but it might be my only option at this stage other than going full Skylake which I can't afford at this stage sadly but I wanted to show you some of the features of this case now this top radiator mount is removable that slides out there we can see how that all mounts up and I've got this as far forward as possible to try and get some clearance for the RAM which wasn't enough now this normally has three screws in the back of the case and two on the front. I've left those out for now to show you guys, but that will uh, that's made everything quite a bit simpler. So that has a rail where it's sorry has a rail that it slides in here. If I can line it up, okay, we'll leave that out as well for now. But also, I wanted to show you some other parts that this case came with. It came with a very nicely laid out accessory box. It has a lot of hard drive mounts, which I'll show you a nice plastic case with all the different screws sorted as well. So I'll get in a bit closer and show you guys those. Here we've got the included accessory box that comes with the Fantex Enthu Evolve ATX series of cases. In the case, uh, in the box, We've got a few things in here, a nice little bit of paper, well, it's not really nice, but anyway, some cable ties and some different LEDs. Now these LEDs are for the, I'll try and get this to focus first, sorry guys. These LEDs here are for the front light on the case. You can change it between green, red, white, and oh sorry, green, red and blue. And I also believe there is one other colour already installed in the case. We've got a nice glossy manual here. Um, which has a lot of things. This I thought was awesome. This is a nice little plastic case with all the different types of screws assorted into their own little compartments. This case I will be keeping. Um, handy and adding more screws most likely into there. All black screws which is also awesome to see. Thumb screws and all different types of threads and lengths. Fan mount screws here. Um, that was a nice surprise to see. Um, we've got this here is got, uh, sorry this here is a pump mount for a water cooling loop, it's got rubber pads on both sides to absorb some vibration, keep noise down, things like that. That I believe I will be using with my build to put the pump on in the basement of the case. And then we have one, two, three. These are 
three and a quarter hard drive bays, three and a half inch hard drive bay mounts, sorry. These mount up in the case like so along here if I wanted to add additional hard drive space or additional hard drives. Coming around to the back of the case here we can see a PWM fan controller which I'll be using to control all the fans in the build. Of course some velcro straps for cable management we can see I've already test fitted some of my cabling here. Now I thought these were pretty awesome and will be very handy for mounting up my SSDs. These are little SSD trays that just slide on the back here. There's also a couple of other locations where these can mount. One on the front of the case if you had a nice SSD you wanted to put on display. We've got down here as well two three and a half inch drive bays or sleds here and this bracket is actually removable and this is where the water pump bracket can mount. It's got a rail it can slide along, along sorry, if you need to adjust its position. This will be coming out for my build and I will be mounting that pump down here. I may put a three and a half inch mechanical drive in the system. I may not. I haven't decided just yet. Either way, I'll have one in there temporarily to get all my games from my other system I've been using. Lastly, I wanted to show you guys the dust filters that are included on this case. Now there is one short one here for the power supply fan, which is always handy to have as it's normally drawing air from the bottom of the case, especially for people that keep their PCs on the carpet. And we've also got one large dust filter here in the front. So this front aluminium panel pulls off very easily. And behind that we can see this dust filter which pulls off very easily giving access to the fan mounting. There's that LED I was talking about earlier for the power indicator light as well. So we can see that there's quite a lot of length there too and that dust filter covers that whole front area. I've run into a couple of problems with the build guys. With my fitting that is a Y splitter there's not too much room in the bottom of the case so I'm having a bit of trouble determining how I'm going to run that and everything. I'll get in close and show you guys that but at this stage I'm thinking of buying some 90 and 45 degree angle fittings to get around that. Also on my 240 millimeter radiator here in the front of the case where the fittings thread in the ends have broken off. Now I do believe it will still seal but that bit of the radiator will be visible so it might look a little bit untidy and also I am wanting to put another 360 radiator in the front. I'll probably buy the exact same one as the XSPC one I have in the top. That way I'll be able to have three fans on the front and also three fans on the top. Meaning I can have positive pressure and probably leaving the rear exhaust fan off. Just having a fan there for aesthetic purposes. But Having three in the front and three in the top, I can run the front intake fan slightly faster than the top and sh I should be able to maintain positive pressure in the case, keeping dust out and stuff like that. But I'll get in close and I'll show you down in the basement where my pump is and I'll show you why there is a little bit of trouble there getting all of that to fit. I thought I might show this first of all. We can see up here there's a silver ring around where these fittings thread in. Now there's actually meant to be a raised black section. We can see it's still on the end of this old barb fitting that I had. So we can see when it's threaded in. If it will thread for me. That black bit is raised. Now that was actually part of the radiator and when I undid these fittings it came off with the fitting. I don't see there being a problem as I mentioned but I probably would rather have a radiator that hasn't had those ends break off. We can see the pump down here in the basement and we can see that splitter there. So one is coming up here on a 45 degree angle and one is going down. Now over here this is the tap for the drain which is almost touching the bottom of the case. So I'm thinking I might need a 45 degree angled fitting so it's pointing straight out towards the back and then a 45 degree on that so this is going straight up 
to the radiator. I know it's not ideal and I'm hoping hoping it's not going to be too messy, but if we open the back we can see where the edge of the case is and there's really not too much room here. I've looked at lots of different ways to mount this and I just can't seem to find any other way. So hopefully I get that all figured out soon. I'm going to go ahead and install this here. This is the terminal block for connecting the two GPUs for the water to run through both of those. So roll time lapse. Now I want to show you guys I've got that water block adapter there for the two GTX 970s. I've also got the Republic of Gamers SLI bridge here which came with my motherboard. Now the um, this block here has really helped increase the rigidity of the two cards as you can see there. It's really helped reduce GPU sag which people had pointed out in the comments of quite a few of my videos. So that's about it for today guys. As you can see I've still got quite a lot of work to do in here and I'm waiting on some parts to arrive. When they get here, I'll be able to get on to doing some more building, hopefully sort out the issues I've got with the fitment of the pump and also address the fittings here. I've got a new radiator on the way, another one of these XSPC 360 millimeter radiators. So it's a bit thinner than this, but a bigger surface area, so I'm not too worried about having a thinner radiator. And some more fittings from EK on the way couple of different styles of splitter fittings so I, I'm hoping they'll address my issue with that fitment with the Y splitter fitting in the bottom there. Once that all arrives I'll get that all fitted up and I should be able to start making my hardline tubing for the build which I'm really looking forward to. I'm a little bit nervous because I've never done it before and I'll need to bust out the heat gun to get that done but it shouldn't be too bad but anyway i do thank you guys a lot for watching i do appreciate all the comments and likes you guys are giving uh, feel free to take a look at my twitter which i'll leave a link to in the description down below but anyway guys thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you on the next one